I'm wearing these, Julio, in today's episode um, in order to channel um, the inner Bash Brothers um, for this team. Um, for the listeners on podcast, I'm wearing these very retro 80s sunglasses. They have thunderbolts on the side. Pretty cool. Um, because whatever the fuck we're doing, we can't seem to bring runs home. And back in the Bash Brothers era, that was not an issue. So, yeah, that's why I'm wearing these. Hopefully we can hit some homers with some guys on base. Yeah. Dingers. That's all you got got for me? Uh, Look, it sucks. We're going to get into it more, but. Yeah. Do you think these sunglasses are are cool? I think they're. Oh no, I think they're great. Except they just sort of remind me of. uh, I was at a wedding this past weekend. Yeah. And uh, it was, which was a hell of a great time up in the mountains of Pinecrest. But uh, one of the guys there, who uh, quick tangent story, I'll take like two minutes tops. I I knew it was going to be make it one. All right, cool. And go. I knew it was going to be not a super formal wedding. So I just had a short sleeve dress shirt, some slacks. Mm-hmm. Cool. That's my outfit. I took nice. the cleaners, brought it home, all that stuff. We get there Friday night and I realized, oh shit, I forgot them. So all I had was jeans, uh, a button up Hawaiian shirt. I still had my dress shoes and I had a bomber jacket. And I'm like, I'm like, and then when he's like, oh, you're, you're going super informal, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, look, I know I'm looking formal. It's not, not, I'm fine with that. But the person whose wedding it was for is from Vacaville. I'm like, I know the expectations. <laughs> and I was right. One dude had their same sunglasses. He had a nice, like, Jerry Curl mullet thing going on. It was a fucking killer look that just reminded me of that man. There you go. Good. Uh, shout out to that man, whoever you are. Uh, from, he, he was from Chico. Yeah, it's a killer makes, cowboy oh boots. Oh my god, that makes so cowboy much sense. boots, and he had a belt. And I'm like, and I went up to the end of the night. I'm like, hey man, I'm digging your look. I'm like, that's a <laughs> kick ass look. Uh, no, I actually have these. I'm going to a bachelor party this weekend, and I'm just if we have a pool party day, I'm gonna just rock the fuck out of these. Anyway, welcome to the Town Tailgates podcast. I'm Chris Madrigal. That's Julio Reynoso. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, Chris is the guy with the dope ass sunglasses. Um, we are powered by Around the Diamond the Podcast Network. Check out their stuff. Um, check out our stuff at Town Tailgate on Twitter. Um, all right, Julio, top into it. Um, some uh, oh, we're gonna have a special guest later in this episode. Um, you, he's not that special. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> host of the uh, he's a great young man. We love we love Robbie. Uh, he's been on here quite a few times. Uh, host of the uh, Four Train Savages uh, podcast, the Yankees podcast. He's going to come on second half of the, of the episode to um, break down the matchup that we have this weekend. The big series, um, big for them, big for us, because we need to get back into the playoff hunt and they need to stay in the playoff hunt because it's a tight race for the wild card. So we're going to talk about all that. Talk about this Yankees team, what to expect. Um, all that jazz. Um, let's jump into it. The big three, our biggest, our number one, uh, of the big three story this week, probably sh- if this was, if this happened 15 years ago, would have been like the biggest story in all of sports, but because we live in a modern era where baseball is probably the number, it's the number three sport in the country. It's potentially number four. Um, and football trumps everything. Uh, Miguel Cabrera, hit the 500 home run mark um, this past week. First Venezuelan born player to hit 500 home runs. Second international player behind the cheater, Sammy Sosa. So you can think what you want about that. Um, but amazing feat. Miguel Cabrera. Hold on. Time real quick. There is more than Sammy Sosa. It's Sammy Sosa, Manny Ramirez. Oh, Manny Ramirez. Yeah. yeah David yeah, yeah. Ortiz, Rafael Pomero, Pujols. But to kind of go to your point, there were all cheaters besides Pujols. <laughs> touche um yeah sorry i just really wanted to get it in this point so i got too excited and broke sorry, past it. but I, now I, you I, completely I killed it, all this yeah, momentum so thank you for that good job um uh miguel cabrera really fell out of the spotlight in the past like five or six years it feels like it feels like to me only yesterday was like the 2012 2013 2014 run they had where he was like the mvp of baseball for that couple of years and like before trout came around the best player in baseball won the triple crown and then it just like a, f- a vast fall off it's probably because the tigers got shitty and they started trading away everybody 
but it's also, I think, because of the injuries. Like, if you look at his stats, he's had really good seasons the past, like, three seasons. Yeah, it, I think it was, yeah, the Tigers not being a good team is probably a big reason why we're not really talking about him. But he just, he just got older, man. Um, he I think this last offseason, he actually kind of trimmed down on weight. And he, he's played – he hasn't been great this season by any means, but he's been solid. I think he's probably been a better player over the last three years than Albert Pujols has. That's for sure. I mean, no, Albert Pujols, Pujols got DFA. I think that explains it all right yeah. there. But honestly, uh, awesome. I, I tweeted this when it happened from our account, which was like eight years ago. I hated Miguel Cabrera because mm-hmm. like that was that was our number one rival was those Tigers teams. But I think as times pass, I'm like, I love Matt. I love Miggy. Miggy's been like so tight thinking back to those 2003 Marlins team when he was just a rookie and helped win the world series that year. He had some really fantastic years at the Marlins. So it's just great. And I, you know, I know you said if this was 14 years ago, but the biggest story, but I think still, and even though the home run records have been tainted a little bit because of the history of cheaters, all these guys we just named off and more, I think it's still an amazing accomplishment because mm-hmm. that's just longevity in the game. That's just, you know, being able to be longevity, just staying durable and also just putting up power throughout all those years is excellent. So like, I don't think this would be anything. That's why I put this as a top story is like, but I think but it's awesome. My, you got to celebrate guys like this when it happens. My point was not that it's not important. My point is that it's not going to get quite the coverage in the media and just in general vibe of just like celebration now because of where baseball is, as opposed to 15 years ago. No, this is fucking dope. Like I did, I read a bunch of articles about it the the day after I was super stoked about it. I always hated Miguel Cabrera when he played against us, but I always liked him as a baseball player. Like, especially like those years with the Marlins. A lot of people forget he won a world series with the Marlins in 2003. It was his rookie season. So he had success really early in, in his career. Um, He's a first ballot hall of famer in my career, in my opinion, I think anytime you win a triple crown in baseball, especially since the, the, the one before that was Carl Yastrzemski in 1967. I think, you know, that deserves a, a first ballot Hall of Fame bid in the 500 club, I think also explains it all too. Does he get to 550 or 600? Probably not. He's 38, but I want to ask you that. Julio. Maybe 550. I don't, he'd have to do, like I don't three, think he's not going to get three seasons. Yeah. No, he's not going to get, six he's not gonna get sick unless he just has like this Nelson Cruz, uh, back end career rejuvenation thing, maybe, but realistically, you'd have to I go strictly DH. I would think to do that though. Yeah. But who, who knows, man, uh, the tigers are been known to spend some money. I was kind of reading earlier today that, uh, th- they're kind of linked to Carlos Correa in the off season, just like the AJ Hinch reunion and like they're they have a pretty solid young core so if you just put a bunch of solid young core on top of stars now and have them as kind of like the background guy dh he'll play every other day maybe keep him fresh but who knows um yeah do, do you think he's gonna get it before we kind of go into my next thing i want to talk about with the i don't tournaments? i don't think he gets to 550 he would really like i said he he can't play first anymore because he's got to like probably he's got to rest his, his his legs a little bit so he'd have to go to a full dh position he'd have to go to a stack team where where um you know there's guys around him that pitchers might have to pitch to um and they could pitch around him a little bit more and yeah, I don't know. It'd be it'd be tough. Maybe a pitcher's friendly or a hitter's friendly ballpark too. I don't think so. The way he's been like trending down, I would say it'd be tough. Yeah, I mean he might get twenty home runs this year. Um, he also hasn't been healthy the past few years, so maybe that's part of it too. So he would have to play a full a full season, uh, like the next three seasons. But you know, we'll see. We'll see. Now, who's next? Nelson Cruz is only 57 away. He's 41. He's hit 26 this year. So it's probably going to be him. We'll see. He's not slowing down. I know, but father time, man. I know unless he, Tom Brady is getting him in on that, that regimen of the no shadow veggie regimen, then maybe, but we'll see, man. That's going to be a tough one. Uh, Another one. I don't know. Another one. You got to consider Giancarlo Stanton. He is only 30. He's going to be turning 32. He's at 344, 334 right now. 
Um, so let's see, minus 334. But he can't stay healthy. He needs 166. So let's say if he's averaging 30 home runs a year over the next, mm. he'll need 30 home runs a year at least on average over the next five and a half years to get there. But you said it. Yeah. Injuries. The Mike guy, Trout he, what was the first one that came to mind because I know he's already at, he's already past 300, but he also in recent <laughs> years can't stay healthy. I don't know, man. That's a tough, that's a tough one. Matt Olson. Yeah, he's got several years to go. All right, next story. Um, this is a bit of a sad one. Um, uh, recently came out in a report that um, ex-Angels front office staff person um, was connected to um, a drug ring. I think it was the was it was it the cartel. I can't remember if it was a cartel. Not ex- yeah, I don't know if it's specifically cartel, but. Um... Connected to some type of um, illegal drug uh, ring. Um, and um, it turns out that Tyler Skaggs was a middleman for that entire, um, that entire, you can, he, if you, uh, you can. Yeah. Write about so me. what was going on was, you know, if Tyler Skaggs was the angels pitcher who unfortunately passed away in 2019 due to uh, a drug overdose, he was uh, on fentanyl and there've been some court cases over the last few years. And the thing that came out was this guy, Eric K who was an ex angel staffer. He was using Tyler Skaggs as the middleman as kind of his drug dealer of getting yeah. it to other players. Yeah. Um, it's not looking, I feel like every year some worse information comes out about the stuff. Tyler Skaggs get Tyler Skaggs death. Um, and it just kind of bums me out about the whole thing because it was such a like a tragedy when it happened and like all the baseball kind of like rallied around it and like celebrated him. But ugh, it just gets worse and worse, dude. So here's a, a quick exchange is during the filing transcripts that they found that Kay and his supplier, I don't think they've got to that point yet, was saying it's instead of having payment for drugs he was gaining from him uh he would offer memorabilia so one of them was like sign mike trout balls and um angels tickets and stuff like that and he kept during those years of 2006 to 2019 he had kept the drugs at his own desk and he's getting faced up to 20 years in prison if he's convicted um I, I I don't I think this is an open closed case, especially with that much evidence. It's just it's it's horrible, and it kind of goes to I can't remember if I sent you this video, but I, I saw a YouTube breakdown of just the Artem Moreno run years of the Angels, and one of the big talking points was like you literally had a a player die while you were the team owner because of your just like ineptitude and just kind of looking turning a blind eye because like they should yeah. have known. That even if Tyler had a problem, not, it's not really a Tyler's fault. It's more of a somebody in this ring is helping him and giving him stuff throughout this time. They should have known, and they probably did know, but they're looking a cold eye to it. It's just it's a horrible thing because it's like the Angels. You know, you don't have much else to really focus on. Otani is going to win MVP, uh, but it's like they haven't had success since 2014 and one of the biggest reasons of a national spotlight is because of negativity. It's yeah. Mike Trout's amazing, but you can't do anything with the team. You know, Otani is amazing. You can't do anything with the team. And then now, unfortunately you have back in the spotlight because one of your ex staffers was a drug Lord amongst major league baseball. Yeah. I don't have much to add to that. It's just sad. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie though. Having this conversation with you wearing those sunglasses does it make it's it just worse? like <laughs> a little, a, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit. Just yeah, it. it you think Tyler? It's just it's sad. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna no, it, it's it's I'm just, just sad all around. I hope this kind of gives his family a little bit more rest, but I hope this kind of puts a fire under Artem Moreno's ass because outside of making beer cheaper and making tickets a little bit cheaper, he's it's been a pretty shitty owner throughout this run. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll go ahead and move it on for us. Uh, here's a story that we wanted to talk about last week, but we wanted to, there was a lot of cool spicy things last week as well. So we held it off to this week, a part of this is a source that told the athletic that MLB proposes salary minimum funded by new tax on teams spending $180 million. So 
quick summary is that they're looking to make a salary minimum across the league that your teams have to pay at spending at least a hundred million dollars to really compete. And if not, mm-hmm. you will get taxed for it, or there will be like a fee or fine for that. Mm. Wow. I wonder who's going to benefit from that. Chris, can you tell me a team off the top of your head that would benefit from an extra 15 to $25 million in payroll a year? Time to pay up, John Fuck Nugget Fisher. That's all I'm going to say. Time to fucking pay up, or you can sell the team to Joe Lacob. That's how I feel about it. Fuck off. You could have imagine if that role was in place this year. I don't think you wouldn't have been able to keep um, Liam. You could have been able to keep Marcus, and you easily could have. You probably found... could have kept both. How much did Liam get? 15 or 18 million? Um, I thought it was ten million a year for three years. Because this year's payroll, I think, was like seventy-five million. Uh, I'm looking. You could have kept both, but you would have had like five million dollars to work the rest of the season. But besides the point, good, 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 good. There is too much. It's this isn't just an ace thing. There's too much of a disparity between. There's not every team's going to be the A's or the Rays where they're going to work on a budget and be successful. There's too many teams that are still underspending, or when they do spend, they're responsible with it. And I think if you just have this out, it's going to even out the playing field. So the A's are and at one 72 point, mil right now, and Liam got paid three years, 54 million. So yeah, a little bit more, but yeah. Let's see. Math time three, 54 divided by three, 18 mil a year. All right. Mm-hmm. So, um, worth it. it, 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 it yeah. Why would th- this is genius? Now, this is all going to be on the CBA. It's going to be really tumultuous. There's going to be a lot of stuff on the table. So hopefully this is one of the main things that pass because Lord knows, like if you want this sport to be healthy, you got to have that competitive balance. The MLB is the only professional sport in uh, American sports that doesn't have a salary cap. Even European sports, apparently they have salary caps too in soccer. I didn't know like La Liga has a salary cap, which is the reason why Messi had to go to PSG. And And now you're, and it's, and it's proven look in the last 10 years, how many teams who every team that's won the champ have won a world series have been top five, top seven payroll throughout that time, except for Kansas city and Kansas city was just like a beast that year. Even then, I think they were at least above average in payroll. Uh, uh, Honestly, if you want to save the league, a great way to do it would be the NBA model, which has skyrocketed through the past 10 years and that's just do the revenue sharing because then it forces your owners to have a minimum they have to pay the maximum is not too much it's not like un unreasonable um and then also you have players on shorter contracts that's why reason why they do four-year five-year maxes as opposed to these fucking massive 10 13 year deals that like stanton and and Har- harper and trout are getting um and also it just like kind of, it just moves money around like that. Honestly, that they should adopt that. And they would get, and the reason why owners would be willing to spend more money is because they're going to get all this TV money. They're going to share with the players and everybody's going to get a cut of it. It's not like there's, there's no excuses. The, the John Fisher excuse doesn't work anymore. It's not it, the whole, the whole like, Oh, well, you know, the, re- the money's not coming in. We, we don't have the revenue to support it. No. Well, you're getting the TV money that everybody's sharing. So that doesn't make any sense. You know, I don't, it's just, yeah, I don't know. It's, I mean, we could do this to fucking dance all fucking day, but um, yeah, this is going to be a good thing. And again, an, a side note to uh, what you said about what's going to be negotiated in the CBA next year. Again, ace or baseball fans, be prepared to potentially have a holdout. There potentially might not be a season next year, but and if anything, there they will not start on time. Be prepared for that because the players are going to be a lot more um it sounds like they're going to be a lot more um stubborn with their demands as opposed to the past because the public's on their side now it makes sense they should get ready to adopt your kbo team right now yeah yeah that's all i'm gonna say all right let's move on to a's news um oh no we suck again Oh no we suck again i was watching uh i was watching grown-ups right before we came on so it reminded me of just Adam Sandler movies in general. 
and Rob Schneider doing the oh no we suck again from Waterboy. Uh, anyway. What's your favorite Adam Adam Sandler movie? Go. Oh, dude, why? That's such a hard one. It's between Big Daddy and Happy Gilmore. Okay. What's yours? Yeah, ha- Happy Gilmore or... I could watch Happy Gilmore every day for a week and never get old of it. Or uh, Big Daddy, you know, it gets hits, hits you in the emotions a little more, but so I wouldn't want to do that. Uh, Billy Madison, obviously, but also underrated wedding singer. Love wedding singer. Oh, oh actually, wait, one. Uncut Gems. <clears throat> Uh, no, I don't. I would get epilepsy. Come on, give me a um, shot. Um, I disagree. Well, you know, that doesn't count. I mean, like, it, no, I know Madison, yeah. Adam Sandler movie. Billy Madison's great, but his voice gets Hotel Transylvania after like an hour. <laughs> hey, I actually like that movie. Uh, oh.